There is a British watch company that boasts on their website that they were the biggest selling British watch brand for 31 years in a row, starting in 1988. Can you think which brand I'm talking about? I think you're probably thinking of Accurist. It's not Accurist, although I suspect Accurist took over that mantle in 2019. It is, of course, Seconda. In their heyday, Seconda was a massive British watch manufacturer and they used to pay the biggest celebrities in the UK probably big money to promote their watches and some of their TV ads were actually really, really funny and a lot of them can be seen on YouTube. So once you've finished watching this video, put into your YouTube search bar Seconda TV ad. Some of them are well worth a watch. Now, they started out in 1966 by producing automatic watches in Russia. They very quickly moved to producing quartz watches in Asia. They've now diversified into smart watches as well, but they still produce affordable quartz powered watches. And I've bought one which is rated to 200 meters. It is a dive style watch. It's not a dive watch because it doesn't have the ISO 6425 certified rating, but it does have the ISO 22810 2010 certification, which means during testing, this watch had to be put into a cylinder filled with water with the pressure increased to 20 ATM, which is the equivalent pressure that this watch would feel if it went down 200 meters below the surface of the water and it would be in that cylinder for 10 minutes. So it may not be an ISO 6425 certified diver but this watch which i picked up for less than 30 pounds should be a fairly capable dive watch and of course in today's video we're going to be putting this watch inside of herman we're going to be doing a loom degradation test as well we're also going to be running over some of the basic specifications and taking a look to see if seconda does actually produce well not just a lot of watches but good watches as well Right, and here is the watch I'm going to be showing you today. I've actually had this for a little while, and it was a viewer that recommended this watch to me during an H. Samuel sale. It retailed for £60, but they were selling it pretty cheap, actually. And so, yeah, a viewer got in touch and said, have you seen this dive-style watch? 200 metres of water resistance for between £20 and £30. That's well worth a look. And, um, yeah, I picked one up and... Herman's been badgering me ever since to get it out so he can have a play with it. So he's definitely going to be yeah, playing with this one towards the end of the video. And what concerns me a little bit is the crown. Pull push crown on a 200 meter water resistant watch. The case back is a screw down case back um, with some specifications there. Look, um, it is a stainless steel case as well and a very nice soft silicon strap, a mineral crystal on the front um, but yeah pull push crown um, if there's going to be a weakness on this watch it will be that but i can only test up to 60 meters or 6 atm so i suspect this watch will survive that test and um yeah we'll be left wondering well will it actually cope with 20 atm but anyway um for now let's just take a look at it it's actually quite a good looking watch isn't it nice splash of color on the minute and the seconds hand and some sort of faux patina markings on the bezel insert, aluminium bezel insert. Um, it feels a bit cheap, actually. Um, there's a bit of a lip where the insert um, doesn't quite sink into the bezel properly. And the bezel action is, oh, yeah, it's not great. Lots of back play. Um, the clicks sound quite cheap. Um, it feels very light and loose. Um, yeah, it's not fantastic, but then what would you expect for less than £30? What about the alignment? Um, I don't think it's great, actually. Yeah, lots of back play. Look at that. Um, it's not awful, but it's not perfect. Now, there is some loom, so we're going to look at the loom in a minute, um, but you can see on the dial there, look, 200 metres, which means, like I've already said, this watch needs to be able to cope with that pressure for 10 minutes in testing and um, which i'm not so sure everybody realizes um yeah if watches have ratings like that on their dial even though they're not iso 6425 certified divers they still need to be able to cope with that pressure for 10 minutes 
during testing. Now, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm thinking, actually, it is quite a good looking watch. A very soft silicon strap collected lots and lots of lint over the last 18 months. Obviously, I've cleaned it up for the purpose of this review. Um, stainless steel buckle, which is signed. It says stainless steel underneath. Look, there it is. And the finishing on the case seems OK. The polishing seems OK. The circular brushing on top of the lugs, again, seems actually quite nice. The transitions between the two seem pretty good as well. Um, the bezel is fully polished. The grip, well, it's not fantastic, but like I've already said, um, the bezel action is very, very light and cheap feeling. And I think the bezel does look a little bit cheap as well. But um, overall, I think it's a pretty good looking watch. And the initial loom burst seems, well, it seems OK. Let's let that run down now for five minutes and see what happens. Well, after five minutes or so, the loom on the hands is barely visible. The loom on the applied indices, I think, has pretty much vanished. So yeah, as expected, this very affordable watch doesn't have fantastic loom. Right before we let Herman out of his cage, let me show you this watch on my roughly average seven and a quarter inch-ish wrist. It actually looks all right. It's obviously a fairly big watch. It's not too heavy given it's on a silicon strap. And actually the silicon strap is probably one of the best features. It does feel like a really nice soft silicon strap. I personally am not a fan of them because they just collect so much lint, but yeah, I remember when I unboxed this thing, I was really quite surprised by the strap. And yeah, it really isn't a bad looking watch, is it? Um, it just feels a little bit cheap in places. Um, right, let's let Herman get stuck into this thing, shall we? Now, I've just finished testing this watch inside of Herman, and I'm going to need your help to interpret the results because on this particular occasion, it really isn't that straightforward. I performed the more risky test where I increased the pressure while the watch is in the water because, well, this is a 200 meter water resistant watch. So 60 meters of pressure or 6 ATM should be well within its limits. And um, yeah, I thought the watch would pass with flying colors when I released the pressure and took the watch out after about half an hour. There were no obvious signs that there'd been a failure, but then I put the watch on the radiator to heat up the moisture inside the case. Don't forget all watches have air inside them and all air has moisture in it. So all watches have some moisture inside the cases and I heated it up to evaporate any moisture. I then put it back onto Herman with an ice block so that the um, condensation would form on the underside of the crystal. And depending on how much condensation would form, we'd then be able to try to determine or decide whether or not it had passed or failed. And there was actually quite a lot of condensation, not a massive amount, um, but it was quite thick and dense and it was really quite a sort of, well, a sort of bulky patch. So I thought, well, let's have a look at this movement because I haven't actually had a look at the quartz movement and let's have a look inside the watch. And unfortunately, it looks like um, when the case back was screwed on during manufacturing, um, well, there's a fairly noticeable kink and some damage on the rubber O-ring that basically um, sits between the case back and the case and creates a watertight seal. Um, it looks like um, the watch may have been compromised or its water resistance capabilities may have been compromised by the case back not being seated correctly or by this rubber ring not being seated correctly. And there is a little bit of water um, on the inside of um, the thread on the case. Um, and I wouldn't expect to see any moisture there because that is essentially inside where this rubber ring would sit. So I think some water has gotten into the watch. I don't think it's necessarily because this watch can't cope with the pressure because of its engineering. I think it's probably because um, the case back hasn't been put on particularly carefully during the manufacturing process. So um, yeah, that's a bit of a disappointing one, that isn't it? And as you can see, it has a very small and probably cheap quartz movement inside, um, which is obviously gonna be a problem for most people, uh, most people watching this video anyway. So um, let's get back to, do I think Seconda make good watches? Um, well, I've only seen one, um, it's okay. Um, it's not a fantastic watch, is it? We have to remember these are incredibly cheap watches built for people who really aren't looking for incredibly well-made watches they just want nice looking watches for as little money as possible so i'm not expecting anybody that's watching this video to fall in love with seconda watches i suspect some of their watches are very very nice um, but this particular one um, yeah it might be worth 30 pounds because well it's a fairly nice looking watch and there are some strengths to it but 
overall, um, yeah, there's a lot more watches out there that I think I would rather spend my £30 on. So, um, yeah, I might get some more secondas in in the future. And if you've seen a seconda that you like the look of, let me know. I might, um, yeah, I might get it in. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Look after yourselves. You'll see me again. And Herman probably very, very soon.